Hello everybody, welcome to Serena in a Nutshell. Today is going to be the first video in my photography series. And more specifically, today we're going to talk about the exposure triangle. Yeah, it's kind of a lame triangle, but deal with it. They call the exposure triangle an exposure triangle because without any of these three elements, dun dun dun, you can't have an exposure. You just can't. It's impossible. It's just the way photography works. So, those three elements are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Let's get started here with aperture. Aperture is how open or closed the blades inside your lens are. When they're more open, they're going to let in more light. When they're closed down, they're going to let in less light. Aperture is going to be measured in f-stops. So the lower the f-stop number, the more light it's going to let in. So for example, an f1.4 lens is going to let in a lot more light than an f5.6 lens. Why they're called f-stops? No idea. I just know that's what they're called. The aperture also affects the depth of field in your photos, which is the blur in the background. If you want more blur, you're going to want to use a smaller aperture, so something like, you know, f2.8, f1.8, f1.4, around there is going to give you a lot of bokeh, a lot of very good bokeh. There are a lot of other elements that go into depth of field, which I'll be getting into in a whole other video because there's a lot more to it. ISO is the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the ISO, the more light it's going to read into the image. So if you're indoors, you're going to want to use a higher ISO, or if it's darker outside, if you're outdoors, you can use a lower ISO. ISO is just measured in numbers, the lowest being 100. The highest just depends on your camera, usually around 6400, somewhere around there. And ISO always doubles, so you go 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, etc, etc. You may be thinking, great, I could just bump up my ISO, always get a proper exposure, blah 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 blah. But there is a downside, and that downside is grain. Lots of grain. The higher ISO you use, the more grain you're going to get in your image. So depending on your camera and how well it handles higher ISOs, you could get a lot of grain at 1600 or higher. Typically it's when you start seeing a lot of grain, but it all depends on your camera. Generally the more expensive the camera, the less grain you're going to have at higher ISOs. In general, if you're outdoors and it's sunny, ISO 100 is perfectly acceptable. You generally don't need to go higher. If you're indoors or if you're in somewhere dim or lit, you're going to have to start bumping that ISO up. Shutter speed is pretty self-explanatory. It's how long the shutter stays open to capture an image. A slower shutter speed's gonna let in more light, where a fast shutter speed's not gonna let in nearly as much light. Shutter speed's measured in seconds or fractions of a second, so one two hundredths of a second is gonna let in a lot more light than one eight hundredths of a second. Depending on the look you're going for it will depend what shutter speed you're looking for. If you're wanting to freeze motion, you're going to want to use a higher shutter speed. It's going to give you a more crisp, clear image without as much blur, just depending on exactly how high your shutter speed is. If you're looking to capture that movement and flow of like a moving subject, uh, waterfalls is common to do long exposures, you would want to use a slow shutter speed. And if you're using a really slow shutter speed, like 150th or, s or uh, shorter around that range just depending on your lens you're using. You're going to want to use a tripod otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of camera shake. A good rule of thumb for picking the slowest shutter speed you want to use handheld is take the lens you're using, for example I have the 50mm f1.4 on here, and not use a shutter speed any slower than the same as the lens. So since this is a 50 millimeter, I wouldn't want to go any slower than 1 50th of a second without risking lots of camera shake. And even at that 1 50th, you still want to be really solid in your uh, grip, otherwise you could still end up with camera shake. I shoot in full on manual and usually what I'll do when I'm trying to create an exposure is I usually choose my aperture first. I almost always have my aperture open as wide as it can go because I like the depth of field I can get with it. After that I'll usually pick my ISO. I'd rather use a higher ISO and risk the grain than use a slower shutter speed and end up with a blurry image. So I'm not afraid to bump that ISO way up there so I can get a reasonable shutter speed to capture what I'm looking for because grain is way more better than blur. If my shutter speed isn't high enough that I'd like for the type of image I'm creating, I'll go back bump the ISO up a little bit until I can get it at the shutter speed that I like. Now let's talk about shooting modes. Besides automatic, you have three shooting modes. There's a lot of threes when it comes to photography. You're going to have aperture priority, shutter priority, and full-on manual. For example, got my little knob. 
C I got M would be manual, A V is going to be aperture priority, and T V which stands for time value is for shutter priority. So in aperture priority, you choose the aperture, you can choose the ISO or set it to auto, and then the camera is going to pick the shutter speed for you. In shutter priority, you get to choose the shutter speed and the ISO if you'd like, and then it's going to pick the aperture for you. In full on manual, you're on your own, you got to pick the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, and it's all up to you to create a proper exposure. So I'm on manual mode here, I got my ISO at 1600 as you can see, my aperture is f1.4, and my shutter speed's at 1500, so now if I see that little notch on the exposure equivalency there, that's telling me since it's not on the zero, that means I'm overexposed. So I need to put a higher shutter speed, so I'll move that until it gets to where I'm comfortable. There we go. It's on zero. Snap a photo. Look, it's not too blown out. It's not too dark. Got a proper exposure there. It's basically an exposure meter, so it's telling you if you're getting a proper exposure or not. Or you can cheat like me, like I do sometimes, go into live view. This live view will show the exposure until you get it, and it's right. Ta ding so that's it when it comes to the exposure triangle. I hope you learned something from this. If you did, let me know what was most useful to you down in the comments below. And I'll see you next time, guys. See ya! I really have no idea what I'm doing here. Just playing it by ear. This is weird. It's awkward. The shutter opens when you're capturing a minute. I, I almost made it that time. ISO is the image sensitive... Why do I keep saying image? Shutter speed, shutter speed, shutter speed, shutter speed. Hello, friends. <laughs> Alina would be proud of that. Let's try this again. Aperture also affects the depth of field, which is how much blur is in the background. Wow, I can't 